So hi everyone and welcome to this uh, second part of the video on an example of Monopoly using calculus. So we're gonna pick off uh, where we left off in the last video and go to this new question. So show that the price output combination chosen by the monopolist in part A, so that's the price output, uh, the price of uh, 300 and the quantity of five, okay, lies along the elastic portion of the demand curve. And we're also asked to calculate the value of the firm's learner index, which is again, a measure of monopoly power. So uh, let's start first with the uh, this first portion, the elastic portion of the demand curve. So to show, okay, to show, that uh, our quantity, so that's QM equal to five and uh, PM equal to 300 uh, lie along the price elastic portion. Okay, we need to demonstrate or we need to prove that uh, the elasticity of price uh, the price elasticity of demand rather for the monopolist is greater than one and that price elasticity is equal to dqp dp times p over q so essentially we just need to solve for this and prove that it's greater than one so uh if you notice this form here it's uh the direct demand function but we're given with the inverse this so that's p uh, our form earlier, that's P is equal to, uh, if I recall correctly, that's P is equal to uh, 400 minus 20 Q. So that's the inverse form. So essentially, we can just calculate this one. So that's DQP over DP. This is the same as 1 over DPQ over DQ, right? So that's going to be 1 over... Okay, this derivative here, our function, uh, in, if you recall our function from before, okay, the function from before that's uh, P is equal to 400 minus 20Q. Okay, so taking the derivative of that, okay, with respect to Q, that's negative 20. Okay, and that's going to be equal to negative 1 over 20. Then we just plug it into this formula here. Okay, so... The price elasticity is going to be equal to um, negative 1 over 20 times okay, P. Okay, P is going to be equal to 300 all over 5. Okay, so this is going to be negative 300 over 100 or simply negative 3. If we take the absolute value of negative 3, that's going to be equal to 3 which is greater than one. Therefore, we show that uh, the output price combination okay, lies along the elastic portion of the firm's uh, demand curve. Okay, so next, uh, we can calculate for the learner index. So to get the learner index, okay, the, to get the learner index, we use the formula, we use one over EPQM. And this is essentially the elasticity that we computed for. So the learner index is going to be equal to 1 over the elasticity, that's this one, is equal to 3. Therefore, L is equal to 1 over 3. Okay? So that's a simple way to do it. Uh, we can do the long cut method as well. So alternatively, LQM or your learner index is equal to PQM minus MC. QM over PQM. So if you plugged in, for example, we have price here, right? So if you plugged in uh, to price, so that's 400 minus 20 times 5, you're going to be left with 300. And if you plugged into cost, okay, our cost function from earlier, that will be 200. Then this one will be over 200. And we're going to be left with... Uh, I'm sorry, 300, okay, then we're going to be left with 100 over 300, which is equal to one third, which is the same that we got uh, just using the one over the elasticity formula. So how do we interpret that? So since, okay, L is equal to one over three, which is greater than zero, then the firm, the firm enjoys, okay, some form of monopoly power. And in particular, okay, 
the firms, the firms, proportional markup over, okay, over marginal cost is 33.333. So that's one third, right? Percent. Okay. And uh, that's the answer for that uh, question there. So we're going to end the part two here and then we're going to go to part four in the next video. So uh, part three rather in the next video. So thank you for your attention.